Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Wendy again from Sahaya Suji Kimo. And today I wanted to talk you about Oashoi problems. I'm sure for many it is definitely the worst part of the entire ensemble. It doesn't want to stay put, it gets crooked, it gets diagonal, it gets hidden all the time and no matter how much you pull it, it won't stay. I've asked about it a bit on what kind of problems that people tend to get and I hope to uh, solve a bit of them today. While I do want to address, a large number of these problems will be caused by how much padding you use. Generally in a kimono outfit you will need some kind of padding, a towel or two, maybe even more, because a kimono figure is straight and in normal clothing the figure goes like this. So in the end, the kimono won't look good on you unless you start adding yeah, some kind of padding. For me, I use a big uh, towel that is, I believe, 70 centimeters by 100 centimeters, and I fold it in three. For me, that is enough, but I, myself, I'm not very curvy. I'm kind of flat. I'm tall, but skinny. So for the ladies that are kind of curved, yes, you will need to start adding some more padding, most likely to reach the same kind of results that since some of us who are not as curvy have. So if in the end, if after a bit of practice, it still won't look good. The reason why it won't look uh, good is maybe because you add, add a little too less padding. So with all that said, I've got a few different issues that I wanted to talk to you about. So let's go. Okay, first up is the problem of having a too long Oashoi. The Oashoi that I now have is about this wide. And it should have been only about this. I've got one of my Obi Eater on with an elastic. Simply because they are somewhat similar to the width of a normal Obi. So you kind of get a reference of how long it should have been. The easiest thing to do is just hike it all up. Just pull it upwards and then checking it. Just check how, how, how long it is. This is fairly reasonable. Still not enough. Again, hiking it up further. Again, the OB will be added on top. This one wants to crawl up every time, so hence I that I'm pushing it down. Don't forget to hide all of the the ends of the koshihimo. And we go from this to this by just hiking it all up. Now onto the second one. Too short. Uh, oh, sorry. So here we go. This, this tiny match is basically too short for any regular kimono. However, it will depend on how much of the length is of your kimono and how tall you are yourself. I have another Oashori video which is basically just about how to make an Oashori in general. However, it will affect the, the length of the Oashori where you put the Koshihimo. I mean, if you put it here, here or here, depends all about, about how long you are and how long the kimono is. This one is kind of, well for me a short length, but for someone else a regular. And I'm going to put it in between the, the waist and the hips. So I'm just pulling the himo down. And that should increase the length of the himo, of the Oashori. If it's still too short, pull it all down and down again until you've reached 
your desired length of or her shorty. And then just adding the hemo in again. That's a gym and if you want one of your obi eater. Doesn't matter if the with the elastic one or the one without the elastic. So that is in general how you get a better length or a shorty without pulling it all off. Okay, now on to the next one. So in a case like this, in that you have a keyboard now that is way too wide. My back seam is not here, but here. So in a case like this, you will end up with extra fabric on the sides. This side usually remains a bit less than this side. Depending on the kimono that you're wearing, you can just tuck it in like you would up here and just do the same thing on the top, a stop on the bottom. And if it's really worse, tie it up with an extra hemo. Just make sure it will be underneath the obi eater so that it will stick and not just go down or to the sides again. This one is not too much too wide. I had another one which was way more wide than this one. I did have huge problems, but that is the only trick I know and that I'm aware of that you can make it less, at least less visible. Just suck it in like you do on a pie up here. Just twist it like this, so it will be ending up somewhat similar to this, depending on how wide, well, too wide your kimono is for you. So the one that I'm going to do now is the one that is kind of common when first starting out with Kitsuke, is that it just doesn't want to look good. It's bunched, it's thick, it's puffy and it just don't, doesn't want to even look straight even if you put something on top of it. Now what mostly what common is is that the underneath it's all bumped up. I mean there's all kinds of folds here. Grab your side seam and the end of the collar and pull them simultaneously straight until there is no more bunching. And then you can lift up the oshoi and pull it all down. It's been too long that I've experienced it myself, so it's kind of hard to show. But if you at least have the underneath completely straight, that will affect huge, at least a huge amount. And again, the amount of padding that you use underneath will be a great effect of how straight and flat your OSO is. Next up, getting these two aligned. So here you have the OSO that we just prepared. These two sides, the inner side and the outer side, most likely won't align. This one will be much longer than this. So what we do here is grab the inner part and lift the remaining fabric while creating a kind of triangle and making sure that you have these two aligned. But this one isn't as long so there is not much fabric. You just pull this under yourself, under itself, making sure the colors are nice, neat, and then this one goes inside, making sure it has all the fabric. 
and it goes around the back. And now comes the tough part. I usually grab it with one hand. Being left handed, I grab it with my left. Doesn't really bother which one you usually do. And then you tie the hemo. Now just softly align the upper parts on the sides. Just pull this one down and this. Now you should be able to have these two aligned by now. Oh, get my sleep out of the way. These two should be nice and neat now. Hiding the ends, pulling them slightly down. And now it all fits. And then just adding your daddy jean on top and you're done. As for the next part, and some of you said it, that you've got a kind of bunching over here. That the OSO is not as straight as in the front. Well, this is something that I've been bothering for quite a bit but as I figured looking at pictures of other people is that simply by pulling this down it doesn't help, it's still all bunched up. When you feel it you kind of feel some wrinkles down here just underneath the oil So what you do is pull that up And make it flat. It's just easy as that. Just pull all of the fabric up so there is no more wrinkles down here. Um, as when I asked a couple of, uh, of people on what their problems were, some mentioned that the overshow is sometimes right up underneath the obi. Well, myself, I have never encountered this problem before. I kind of can't can imagine what is happening here. If you, and I can pull it all down now. If you can pull it down, like if there's no more fabric underneath here, try lowering your himo. Everything, yeah, there is just more fabric than if you just lower the himo. Again, there is a limit on how much you can lower the the, um, the koshi himo. For me, a kimono that is minus 20 centimeters is just the absolute max. So if you if your washo is running up underneath the obi, pull it all down. Just pull it really, really down. And if that doesn't help, lower your koshi himo again. And then just straighten it all up. So next up is the problem of a diagonal washori. Well, this is fairly common if you tie the hemo wrong. Actually, well, wrong. I would say it not in the correct position. Is that when you tie your hemo like this, and the kimono is on the shorter side, this side will become longer at least longer than necessary. Like here. The first thing that you can do is just hike your Koshihimo up all the way in the back, till in the back, so that the Koshihimo sits diagonal. Like so. This may sound strange, but when you get first, you get the or the Osho like this, then you put the Koshima like this and in the end it will become diagonal. It just won't become diagonal but straight like this. It's not that hard actually, just put the, the Himo diagonal almost on the hip here, at least for me, and the other side sits just around here, so it's kind of a diagonal. 
Make sure you tuck the ends underneath and then you should have more horizontal. I'm sure. If it's still not horizontal, just keep hiking it up until uh, you get the perfect result. So there you go. It's, these are kind of the solutions that I've been thinking of while getting all these questions and problems and such. There is one more problem that I was given, and that was about the Koshihimo slipping down during the day and then causing a longer or shorty. Well, basically the, the only way that the thing that I can think of is that either you didn't tie it well tightly enough, that's becoming loose, and that your or your koshimu might be uh, synthetic and therefore more, more slippery. Normally you get uh, silk ones that are they tend to be slippery. Synthetic ones uh, tend to be slippery, and uh, you got uh, yeah kind of muslins, it's somewhat a cotton weave. Those are really good. I use them quite a bit, and actually they are one of my favorites to use, since they tend to stick. Either synthetic kimono, silk kimono, or a, a blend, doesn't matter. E even you got that they stick. If you tie them tightly enough, they will stick, they won't become loose. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it might be in the, your, your kimono that is too slippery, or it might be your koshihimo that you tie it too loose. Yeah, and just retie it. As soon as you notice that it's getting loose, just retie it and tie it more tightly so that it stays. Well, other than that, yeah, if there's Problems, the solution for these problems won't work for you. It might be because it's because of your padding that you don't have enough. With practice, I'm sure it will can you get it right, even with the right padding. I mean, I've been doing this for four years, and even since last year, I've it kind of clicked in my head. So, fun. oh, that's how you do it. So, you can do it with practice, with the right amount of padding, you can do it. It's not impossible. Even I had to learn it. So, I hope it helps. I hope you manage to do it and leave me a comment down below if you succeeded. So, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.